Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, we're going to be taking a look at Fedora 31, the workstation version, right after this. Fedora 31 Workstation and Fedora 31 Server were both released today, along with a number of other versions, such as for ARM 64 and some others as well. So I thought I would uh, take a look. I use Fedora, and so I, I mean, I, I get a selfish interest, but uh, I want to delve into this and, uh, and try to explain to you what some of the things that have changed are. Uh, so, if you're not aware, Fedora 31 is a real rolling release, but they do have an official release schedule for uh, a major version. So, normally, a, a true rolling release would not have a uh, would have a, a series of releases. But what they mean by a rolling release is that your security patches and and sometimes it upgrades packages and, and kernels as you go along. So it's a little bit different because Fedora is the basis for which Red Hat is is built. So these are this is the system that uh, Red Hat uses to uh, to bring in new changes into the Red Hat platform, as well as now as well as CentOS. I'm not quite sure how all well that's going to work with CentOS yet. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, Fedora versions are released about once every six months, give or take. Uh, Fedora versions are maintained up to 13 months. And those allow the user to, to skip a version if they want. Uh, release schedules, of course, are never a certainty. There, there's a number of packages we're out, which are outside the control of the Fedora team. And so uh, depending upon their release schedule, that may impact uh, the schedule for Fedora. Uh, and of course, uh, Fedora, Fedora maintains a release schedule at their site, uh, getfedora.org, if you're interested and want to know more about the next set of releases. <clears throat> the minimum requirements for Fedora 31 is a one gigahertz uh, CPU. You need one gig of memory. Uh, now there is support, <laughs> kind of kind of support for 512 meg, but I don't, uh, honestly, you're going to be using ZRAM a lot in order to compress memory. So in order to keep it running, I wouldn't recommend doing that. So one gig of memory is what they recommend. If anything less, you're going to have problems running applications. 10 gig of unallocated disk space, and you need a VGA-capable display 800 by 600 in resolution. However, the recommended settings for Fedora is 2 gigahertz CPU, 4 gig of memory. Uh, yeah, it'll run in two. I run it in two. It, it, will, it will work. Just be careful what desktop environment you're deploying. If you've got one that's memory hungry, then 4 gig is what you're going to need. That's why they recommend that. Uh, 20 gig of unallocated disk space and a VGA capable display of 1024 by 768. So what changed? What's uh, what's new in Fedora? So um, we talked a little bit about the first point, but the the kernel version is 5.3.7-300, and that's only slightly uh, different than the, my current version of Fedora 30. Uh, workstation, so it, it is a little bit newer, and of course, that's going to change over time. Uh, Yum, however, which was supported on Fedora 30, is gone. So now it's, uh, and they did tell us in Fedora 30 that hey, we're moving over to DNF, so just start using DNF, and I did. Um, so a DNF is faster, um, it, it has the modular content, which is good. Uh, and uh, and it, it is a lot easier to work around when you get into package conflicts. Uh, there are no bootable images in Fedora 31 for i686 kernels. So uh, if you want that, you're going to be out of luck um, with Fedora 31. However, if you're just using uh, i686 packages, those are available in the x8664 multi-lib repo. So you can still get access to those. but you won't be able to boot a kernel under i686. There isn't one. Rub2 now supports some security-oriented modules, some additional ones. Uh, you have CryptoDisk, Lux, and Verify, uh, uh, all part of Grub2 now. 
and those provide nearly full disk encryption. Um, of course, you know, there's parts of the boot process that have to remain unencrypted in order for the boot up process to function properly. Something has to display <laughs> that, hey, you need to put in this password, right? So there's something that has to come up to do that. Python defaults to Python 3, and the reason for that is January the 1st of next year, Python 2 is deprecated, no longer available. So, and, and, we'll, and you'll be using it without support. So some, along those lines, Fedora 31 has started to remove some packages in Python 2. So if you are on Python 2, and you, I'm sure you already know that this uh, transition is underway. You should be moving your code over to Python 3. Fedora now uses C Groups version 2 that has some ramifications for uh, containers. We'll talk about those in a bit. SSH no longer supports the root password uh, login. So uh, Fedora didn't take that out. That was taken out by the Open SSH group, uh, and uh, that was removed in version 7. So they're just remaining in compliance with that. You can, if you want, you can re-enable it, but it's not, of course, not recommended and not a good security practice. Uh, what is recommended is if you do need root access that you enable SSH keys, and you're probably also gonna want to control that access uh, via, uh, and, and limit that access to particular ports, and, and, or excuse me, particular machines on your network. <clears throat> Kerberos removes support for uh, deprecated uh, uh, encryption schemes. Uh, and that's that's a good thing <laughs> because you don't want to be using those. They've already been cracked. Uh, Sphinx has dropped support for Python 2, so they're getting ready for the migration to Python 3. RPM has been updated to 415 uh, from 414, and there are some implications there for developers. Uh, I'm not going to get into that here. Uh, uh, you know, if you're interested in that, I could do a separate video on it. But uh, uh, basically, it's changed the build process just a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> Fedora 31, the deep end desktop environment has been upgraded to version 5, or excuse me, 15.11. Uh, the current version, Fedora 30, the one uh, I do run deep in occasionally, and it's 15.9, I think. .9, I think, is the version. I haven't looked at it in a while, but I think that was the last time I looked. Also, uh, Firefox now supports Wayland if you're running uh, Fedora on GNOME. You can install a version of Firefox that installs support for X11 if you need that. Also, uh, App, uh, Adobe, Fire, uh, <laughs> Adobe Flash is also in there. Uh, I wouldn't recommend using that, it's, uh, unless you like malware <laughs> installed on your machine, but uh, uh, you can install that if you need that. Uh, KDE Plasma supports both X11 and Wayland, so if you want the uh, traditional environment, then install the KDE desktop. Qt applications use Wayland backends on GNOME. Now on Fedora 30, uh, there was already a pretty large number of applications, uh, Qt applications that were supporting Wayland already. So this is just, I think, just kind of a finishing up of uh, the Qt applications under Fedora 31. XFCE updated to 4.14. Noto fonts are, are now variable by default. Uh, and now the container support, uh, that defaults to Podman now because Podman supports cgroups-version 2, whereas Docker supports only cgroups-version 1. So if you, and so Docker is no longer a, a part of the repos of Fedora 31. Now you can add Docker repos into Fedora, but in order for them to run under Fedora 31, you have to change the, the kernel parameter for C groups from version two to version one, and there is instructions on their website to do that. But Podman is the preferred container management. It is a Docker compatible. Uh, now, I, I have not done all my testing to, to verify that I can take a Docker uh, container and bring it over and install it. I uh, I will do that this week to see if that's true. But uh, uh, it is it is command line at least compatible with Docker. Um, at least I know that much from uh, using it on Silver Blue. There, uh, like uh, so, I, I think that's 
I think that's it. So, yeah, if you install Docker without making that uh, kernel change, it, it's not going to run. And what I'll do is uh, I want to I want to spend some time with this. I want to go through an upgrade on my system here and and perform that. It's already pestering me to, to update, which is something about Fedora uh, that when there is a new update, if you're already running an older version of Fedora, it will ask you if you want to upgrade your existing system, and then it will perform that upgrade. There's a couple of ways to do the upgrade process, but um, if, uh, before I get to that. I just want to I want to spend some time as I always do with new releases in a, a VM make sure that everything is going to work okay and that my apps will run so I'll get back on that uh tomorrow we'll work through those uh the release came out today I think it was close to noon and then there was a problem with the download section I I mean I couldn't get it to uh find a file but that finally became available I suppose they were probably transferring code over and they had updated the website and so I just waited until that was done that was ready about mid-afternoon so haven't had a lot of time to play with this just yet but I will hope to see you again real soon please like and subscribe and see you in the next video bye for now